in the air. And that's it. it. A huge result for Pragnananda as Ding Liren resigns. He just throws in the towel because uh, the position is collapsing. B3 is loose. A4 will fall after that. This rook on B4 defended everything. A huge win for Pragnananda. This is perhaps the biggest accomplishment of his career to this point. He has taken down Magnus Carlsen in the uh, Champions Chess Tour on several occasions, but he's just taken down the world number two in classical chess and with the black pieces to boot. What a great win. This win is special because Prananda defeated the world championship challenger, world number two, Ding Liren, with the black pieces in the classical format. And this is his first win against a 2800 player in the classical format. And if you look at his accuracy, it's remarkable. He got 91.7 and then clinched the game. How, so how did he defeat Ding Liren? Let's take a look at some of the critical moments from this game. Starting with the opening, this is the Italian game with bishop c5. And um, there was this traffic jam on the e-line after bishop e6, f6, and then bishop e3. And here we see that after bishop takes e3, f takes e3, there are a lot of pawns on the e-line. And these pawns are controlling the key squares in the center. And White has certain pull in this position, but Prananda kept it very solid with uh, every move that he played. He focused on completing the development. You can see that he connected the rooks here with queen d7. And then after queen b3, he played b6 because the b7 was hanging. It's just a precautionary measure. And then after rook ad1, I observed that he played a waiting game here. He was not making a lot of committal decisions and he provoked Ding Liren to take action. For example, here he played king h8, just waiting, and then he played knight d8 so that the knight could come to f7. He's also offering the exchange of queens. And the concept of exchanges is something that is used often in positions where the position demands some sort of an improvement or defense. So yes, exchanges, uh, exchanging pieces is one way to uh, defend a position. So after queen d7, knight d7, we can say that the position is balanced. And after d4, he got his knight to f7 and now we see that the pawn on e5 is solidified thanks to these two knights, one on d7 and the other on f7. So after king f2, he continued the uh, concept of exchanges. So he played knight g5 and then he quickly traded the knights and then played knight f6. And he's choosing counterplay here because the e4 pawn is hanging and white has to defend the pawn with knight d2. And again here in this position, Prananda decides to wait, wait for his opponent because he observes, like he feels that if there is any pawn break that's going to come in the center and he's not ready for the pawn break yet and since we are already into the end game, he remembers this wonderful advice given by the masters that the king is an active piece in the end game. So he's making efforts to prepare for this transition. Now that the queens are off, we are already in the end game. So after rook e8, we can see that this king is going to do wonders in this end game. So here after rook f3, rook a d8, I think the position was balanced, but this is the moment where we can see that Ding Liren was trying to push. And that's exactly what Prananda wanted in the game. And Ding Liren played g4 here. A, a possible variation here was rook d f1. And the idea is if d5, white could capture on e5 and after knight d7, go rook to f7. This position doesn't, this, this move doesn't harm black, but the position remains balanced. So after uh, c6, let's say, because if you take the pawn on e5, c7 hangs, so you play c6. This pawn on e5 can be captured any time because white cannot play knight f3 as the rook would hang. So after ED and ED, here white could play maybe rook 1 f5. And then after g6, black will eventually pick the pawn. The position remains solid for both sides. This was one way for Ding Liren to continue, but he went g4 here. And after g4, uh, Prananda found a way to uh, clarify matters and uh, the position opens up and it opens in black's favor. So after d5, you can see that he's okay to giving he's okay with the sacrificing the pawn on e5, but he gets e4 pawn in return. And then here rook f f1. In this position, if white goes g5, then you can just take, take, and take. This position is also equal, 
but Ding Liren showed signs of keeping pieces on the board. He wanted to retain some chances without clarifying. So he played rook ff1 and here after ed, the change in structure gives a new hope to black because he is able to create pawn islands. For example, after de5, uh, de4, g5, knight d5, knight d4, he gets this pawn on, he, he gets this pawn break with e5. So he is getting rid of his weakness and, uh, and that is a start of white's problems because after e5, the position is already in black's favor because the knight on e4 is loose, the king is on e2 and the rook is here uh, indirectly threatening the king. So after rook f5, knight b4, the knight is loose and white will be left with a weak pawn on e3. As you can see, in this position black's pawn structure is very healthy in comparison with the white's pawn structure and this was a turning factor. So with the help of some threats, he was able to create a lot of pressure. And then eventually he activated his king with king g6 and king h5. And Prananda mentioned in the interview that this was a turning point for him because he felt very confident after he was able to activate his king. Uh, and uh, these are weak pawns and this king is not able to help them. And with the help of uh, the rook and knight, you know, he was able to put a lot of pressure and then he was able to win the game. So that was a brief summary of uh, Prananda's win. Later he got the spawn on h5 as a passer, he was able to protect his pawn on b6 and also retain all his advantage. And so he, he won the game. So that was a clean win by Prananda, his first win against an elite player against Jing Li Shen. So uh, I wish Prananda all the best uh, for his upcoming games. It will be very exciting to see how he does. When asked about how he feels, he said that it's a good feeling because uh, he had uh, missed some chances in his previous game and he was relieved. He felt really good and uh, and then he also said that only four rounds are over. There are nine more rounds left. Uh, recalling his previous experience, he felt that this is just the start and uh, he's also going to play the football match. So keep an eye on the uh, social pages of chess.com India, chess.com and Understeel for more updates.